Hi, I'm Maham Tariq from SkillCurb. In this lab, we're going to use the power of Cloud Vision API. We'll call the API from a cloud function that will be triggered whenever images are uploaded to Google Cloud Storage Bucket. A cloud function will use the API to process the uploaded images, score them for various unsafe qualities, and flag them if necessary. The flagged and approved images will be moved to their respective buckets whenever a new upload is detected in the Uploads bucket. So let's get started. Log into Google Cloud account and open Google Cloud Console. Enable Cloud Vision API and create three cloud storage buckets. Then create and run the cloud function accessing pre-trained Cloud Vision API. Then we'll upload the images that we want to detect and finally observe the working of our cloud function. Now let's get started. Open your browser in the incognito mode. Go to cloud.google.com. If you don't have an account, click on get started for free. I already have an account, so I'll click on sign in. The first step is to enable the API. Let's go to APIs and services in the GCP menu, then click enable APIs and services. Search for vision and then select the cloud vision API. Click enable if you get the option here. On my screen, it says manage because I've already enabled this API. So now we need to create three cloud storage buckets. Let's go to cloud storage in the GCP menu and click create bucket. The first bucket is going to be for uploads. I am going to call this bucket SCML uploads. You can give it any unique name and end with the suffix uploads. Pick a region and then click create. Go back and we'll create another bucket. This time for approved images. If our function checks the image and doesn't find anything to be concerned about, it will copy the image into this bucket. I am going to call this SCML approved bucket. Finally, we will create a bucket for flagged images. I will call this one SCML flagged. We will access the API with the help of a cloud function. We will see how cloud functions are often used to piece together various services. We will create the function using the cloud function console. If you don't have it pinned here, you can search for it in view all product section. Click on create function and select suitable environment and region. I will select first generation and US East one. Then you need to select a trigger for the function. A cloud storage trigger enables a function to be called in response to changes in cloud storage. The change here will be creation of a new file in the bucket. We will select the uploads bucket for it. Click save and go to the next step. Here we will add the code which will access the vision API. Select python 3.8 as the runtime environment. You can access the source code from the Cloud Shell Editor too, but we'll use the inline editor here as it is more convenient. You can edit existing samples or add new files with the plus sign. Now we need three files, a requirements file, a configuration file, and a main file. The requirement files specifies what libraries we need. We need just two libraries for this function, storage and vision APIs. The config.json file is needed to separate some configuration from our actual application code. In this file, we'll define the flag bucket and approved bucket names. Now let's discuss the main script of our application. You can pause the video when you need to. To start with, we import the necessary libraries and open our config file. Then we create two new GCP clients, one to access cloud storage and one to access vision API. Next, we start to create our check images function. When the function is triggered by cloud storage, it will receive a payload that contains information about the file that has been just uploaded. We capture that information in the variable data and use it to do few things. First, we grab the URI or the location of the image, then we create a new image object using the Vision API library, and we set the source of that object to the URI we just defined. Next, we query the Cloud Vision API. We do this by calling the safe search detection method on the vision client that we already created and we capture the output of that into a variable called response. From that response, we take the safe search annotation and store it in a variable called safe. Now the API returns values as numbers from 0 to 5 based on how likely it is that image has matched a certain category of unsafeness such as adult or violent but to make this easier to understand we create a set that maps these numbers to phrases now we set up a loop to check all of the category responses that we had back and to look for any occurrences of possible likely or very likely as you can see we're checking in the categories of adult 
violent or racy. If any of these result matches, we set flag to true. For this image, we'll also use a standard Python print statement here to write out some output that we can look at logs viewer later. So we get the location of the image from our data variable again. We switch buckets in our cloud storage client either to the flag or a proof bucket. Change the entry point to the name of the function written in code which is check images here. Now click on deploy. It will take about 2 to 3 minutes to be working. The function has been successfully deployed. So now let's go back to our cloud storage bucket to test it. We will check two images in this lab. The first image that we are going to test is a picture of a panda. As this picture has nothing wrong with it, it should go into the approved bucket when we click on refresh. And there it goes. Let's go back to the approved bucket and check if it's there. It's time to upload the second image. It's the picture of an injured rugby player. As you can see, it disappeared right after uploading it. Let's see if it made it into the flag bucket. We're going to view this picture so you should look away now if you choose not to see the picture. This image was somewhat inappropriate so it moved into the flag bucket. You can look again now. So how did Cloud Vision API help us to flag this image? Let's go back into the cloud function, select our deployed function and click view logs. The debug print line that we put in our scripts shows us the name of the file we uploaded and the results of the safe search annotations. Results like this are very useful if we're processing numerous user uploads and we need to automate some sort of moderation on the content. You can pick some of your own images and see if you can get Cloud Vision API to trigger any of the other categories. Don't forget that there are limits to the GCP free tire, so don't get too carried away. When you're ready to clean up the lab, delete the cloud function that you created. Then go back into the cloud storage and delete the three GCS buckets that we created for this lab as all of these are billable resources. I hope this lab was useful for you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.